taking off. This P-38 L, this uh, all silver one, is being flown today by Steve Hinton. Now John Maloney is taking off in the museum's P-38, 23 Skidoo. Owner Rob Lewis is flying the Glacier Girl P-38 F. And we also have uh, Kevin Eldridge. So there they are, there's five, there's only seven in the whole world. We're going to get a real good look at these things as they circulate around. They have a very distinctive sound, the P-38, because you've got a super turbo supercharger at the top of the engine to sell. All the exhaust from that 12-cylinder engine is funneled into one big pipe at the same. They got the planes down safely. They were subsequently rescued. But uh, the planes just remained there. They never rescued the planes. Well, they sat there for 50 years, and finally in 1992, after a few years of digging and expedition, they pulled this one up. And 10 years after they pulled it up, it flew again. So 60 years after it was uh, first crash landed up there, it flew again. Kevin, uh, Steve Hinton made the first flight of that back in Kentucky. That's right. Over 10 years ago. October of 2002, I believe it was. Sometime in 2002, he went up there. But I remember he had to go up there a few times. He had some problems with some filings in the engine oil, and he had to have that reworked. And But Steve has done a great job of bringing that plane back. And take a look at those. There's a P-38J in the lead. P-38L is second. P-38F, Glacier Girl is third followed by two more G J models. Bob Carden was a winner in the Excuse me, they're L models. I'm sorry, they're L models. flying that airplane today. We're lucky to have him here. Oh yeah, Rod Lewis is the owner of this uh, P-38, the Glacier Girl, and he is flying it today. So when they make a pass, you'll be able to see it. Should be the third plane in line. Now if you look really closely, at these, if they get low enough, you'll be able to see the difference in the shape of the engines and some of the details on it on the aircraft fuselage uh, booms because the F model was a very early airplane and the others are more production airplanes. The F model was more handmade. I'd like to get them in a little closer. Hopefully they'll come around a little closer. It was the first production. Yeah, the, the early ones were the first production, but still somewhat handmade if you <laughs> And they only did 10 on building 60 of them originally, and they ended up building 10,000. And it was the only fighter that was in production at the time of America's entry into World War II and the time of uh, VJ Day, the last day of World War II. Okay, they're approaching us now from the south. And we see a couple of them breaking off from the formation there, maybe reforming themselves a little bit. I can imagine it's probably a little windy up there, a little bumpy for them. But they're going to come over us here. And as they're heading north, here's a really good look. Five P-38 Lightnings. that takes out some of the roll. Here's a good look at P-38L. That's in the markings of the 475th Fighter Group, South Pacific, 1944. P-38L flown by Steve Hinton. I'd like to dedicate this uh, event here to uh, Jeff Harris also. He was a P-38 pilot we lost a few months ago. The P-38J right here. The museum's there, but here's Glacier Home P-38F, the oldest one in the bunch. And again, a very different airplane than the other four. The basic difference between a P-38J and a P-38L is basically the hydraulically boosted air. 
P-38s today are being flown by Ron Lewis, Steve Hinton, John Maloney, Kevin Eldridge, and Brent Connor. Girl when it crash landed there in 1942. Most of the P-38s you see are wearing the standard.